Being without the cloud still, without the you know, without the mobile infrastructure still. So it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer where I control my house, my room, you know, basically with available communication, which is the landline, for me to turn off, turn on all those you know gadgets that I have in my room. So. In fact, that was my thesis in my College of Engineering, no? yung Electronics and Communications in Don Bosco. I, I need to mention that because this company that I started 2014 is a startup company, but primarily it comes from a passion. I really love allowing machines to talk. It's my passion, probably even when I was still young. No? I really want machines to talk. And uh, through my very 20, heavy 20 years in the corporate working with the big top IT companies, and a portion of, siguro, three to four years working in the telecoms industry, and being an electronics and communications engineer, that would basically define and describe IoT as far as I am concerned, because it comes both with electronics and with communication and with the knowledge in IT. I might surprise the IT guys here, but I've been an IT guy. I started my first M2M in the enterprise 2000 when I was still with IBM Philippines. It was the first ever machine-to-machine -machine implementation in the Philippines to enable all the cell sites of SMART to be automated. It's all unmanned cell sites, but we monitor the air conditioning and we're controlling the towers. And basically, that's where I I started my love for this business and for this industry. And towards, you know, as, as I go along with my career, it adds up to my experience. And finally, I realized 2014, and it's six years before the big thing in the global arena where Gartner predicted, and I'm sure you are all aware that 2020, there will be more machines communicating than people. It's a fact. It's a given. So can you imagine, if we basically have a lot of people, uh, our, our, our secretary mentioned that a billion SMS in a day is the way how people are communicating, there will be a, you know, a doubling effect, effect for machines to communicate given that, uh, you know, the forecast of where everything is heading on the next three more years. I might be awkward to say this, no, but being an IT, I have changed the paradigm in IoT in terms of, I, I heard Mr. Manny mention artificial intelligence, you know, big data, and cloud computing. In those three items, there's nothing much for me as a parallelism to say that IoT is in those contexts of cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and big data because for me, in my business, I do not do cloud computing. Medyo awkward, no? Medyo alanganin to say that, no? Because I always believe that the power of machines doesn't need a cloud for them to process. Let me state that again, ah. The power of machines doesn't need an internet or a cloud technology to process. So medyo malalim, may hugot. But practically what I'm saying is, the functionality of cloud will just be purely for IoT and for my business, its functionality would just be basically big data, which goes with the business analytics, artificial intelligence, of course there is machine learning, and of course storage. The rest will be a function of machines. Now, I want to connect from the, the talk of uh, Mr. Ike Senieres. No? You know, my, my, my topic about IoT probably will be the, the, the other side of the knowledge-based economy, but I will be on the IoT. The architectural framework, and if we basically, you know, IT guys here would do an IT project, an IoT project, this is my <coughs> advice to you. Change the concept of a centralized network architecture. Pag sinabi natin centralized, this is how people communicate. Bakit centralized? We are people, every one of us, are content-driven. Remember? So, pag tayo, puminto tayo doon sa cellphone natin, may kinukuha tayong content sa likuran, which is we require internet. And I guess, 
Yung sabi ni Secretary then, it really takes us a lot of bandwidth for us to connect where the content is. And it's practically not even in the Philippines. That's the behavior of a person, of a, uh, a way of a person-to-person -person communicate. Machines know. Machines know. Machines communicate, as far as I'm concerned, on a distributed network architecture. Hindi siya centralized. Meaning, meaning, a function of a machine doesn't necessarily require you to process on the cloud because even what I'm holding right now is a microcomputer that has an octa-core. When you say core, it's actually processing, right? So why do you not utilize that machine on your hand to do the processing? You know, people, yes, we want the content because we want to watch Netflix information up on the cloud information, right? Or we need to do like a function of an, an enterprise, an SAP, Salesforce automation, the content is back there, you need to process. But for machines, it should always be, and for those enthusiasts here, no, it should always be down on the device side. I was going around in the region, you know, being invited as well for this top leadership. And I realized even Cisco, I, I basically am a Cisco expert as well in my previous years, but I realized even Cisco, that the nearest way they could go IoT is on their routers, is on their access points. And funny thing, they call it, guess what? They call it fog computing. Because cloud is high, right? <laughs> the <laughs> fog. <laughs> and that's the nearest way they could go. I will say myself, in, in, my, in my business model, in, in my passion in this IoT stuff, I want to be on the land computing. Let's allow and uh, I would say I might be credible now because on my three years, I successfully launched businesses in Philippines that is really IoT. But good thing about this, I, I do have friends in the telco industry, but I don't need much telco for us to implement IoT, specifically in Philippines. Sinabi ko na yung premise eh, di ba? If you're going to a distributed network architecture where you will allow machines to talk and process on that, the level of machine, whether it be a machine to machine, it will allow you now already to create an ecosystem out of it. Ang model, uh, the model of IoT, even with my partners abroad, and later he'll be talking, is always on a model of a gateway. The gateway is only the function for you to get all these informations which corresponds to the big data going up on the cloud. And that function will just be for purely the analytics, machine learning, AI, artificial intelligence, or business intelligence. But for the process below, it can definitely be machine to machine. I will cut the video. In fact, I, I, want, I want to measure, because there, there's only 10 minutes out of this, diba? I should not be speaking sana kasi baka masyadong boring. Pero I wanna, I always say this, I wanna let my machines talk, right? Diba? So I will let my machine talk there. So, uh, Danny, can you allow the machine to talk and do my work here? Anyway, that's the function of the machine. Eh? 2020. We're Who is here. IOT? Written from the joint expertise of M2M Wireless Technology and Tech Towers, IoT is a company positioned to realize the potentials of the Internet of Things to provide an open platform for the seamless interchange of data and information. If Facebook connects network of people, IoT connects network of. Certainly, machines do converse. IoT creates potential for the machines to speak to each other at the minimal cost, in the most practical way. That is, collaboration between machine to machine and machine to people, made easy. Uber operates taxis without their own. IoT, likewise, is not purely dependent on specific tel cooperators. How? Through the mobile networks without the need of mobile internet.
It only requires slightest signal any telco around you, whether it be local Philippine telcos or other international telcos. Two G. 3G and 4G, all is welcome to the open platform it provides as long as the device is wireless info enabled or can communicate through mobile networks, satellite, radio signals, wireless fidelity, or digital broadcasting. Doing things with focus gets things done as soon as possible. That is how IoT works. Unlike cloud computing, <laughs> IoT computes and processes information directly without letting the data travel from the device to the cloud to the back end, back to the cloud and finally the device. That eats up a lot of time. So relying on the cloud could cause problems. In the future, the cloud will mostly be used for long-term machine learning. Most computing will happen locally on IoT devices that work in real time. On the back end side, one can find the following. Big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence or AI, and storage. On the other hand, the front end is the following. Place for the processing embedded technology, sensor monitoring, and the device controls. IoT's cloud services. That is all platform as a Okay, uh, I want to skip this because this is our, our basically our marketing uh, spiel. No? But I'm here more of uh, on the thought leadership of, you know, allowing, enable, enabling IoT projects, practically, specifically in Philippines. Because we have already problems in our our own in our own world for us to communicate, right? So why do we need to add up machines to add up to our problems? <laughs> so I my my vision actually is creating an open platform. It mentions there for us to collaborate, and that's the whole idea. And you know, it's it's. I, I thank also uh, Mr. Aixineres for you know through through this uh, event to to get this invitation to do a you know a, a, a thought leadership uh, lead, leaders idea of in implementing IoT because there's a totally different world of machines and let's give it to them because allowing all these devices around us even the seats, sabi nga ni Mr. I, it's all sensors IoT are all sensors. And machines only communicate two ways. Wala na yan sasabihin pang iba. Whether sasabihin niya if this seat is taken or I wanna remove this seat. Two ways. It's input, output. In our lingo, that's simple as, you know, control and monitor. <laughs> so no more, no more other functions of machines but to communicate in those two ways. And for us, communicating it will allow now all these collaborations and all these different ecosystems to participate in this bigger area. Where now we have started with enterprise because I haven't seen a consumer to embrace IoT or machine-to-machine -machine technology practically because going mo sa bahay mo yung smart homes. Sorry for my friend here this is a foreigner but it's so hard, di ba? Kasi tawagin mo na lang katulong mo mas marami ka pang may utos eh. <laughs> Rather than automate my turn on, turn off, right? In, 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 in Europe, yes, you know, labor cost for maintaining somebody at your home will be so expensive. For Philippines, you know, utusan mo na lang. Kaya, the consumer is my least, in terms of implementation of IoT here, is my least of my focus industry. What I really want are the enterprises to benefit uh, with, 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 with computers. So, I would accept the fact that I grew up on a mindset of institutional base. Knowledge is actually something where sinabi ng magulang natin na mag-engineer ako. <laughs> diba? So, it was something where it was through that year na wala pang mga computer that I was you know, given that, that challenge na kasi mag-engineer ka. But, my kids, I have four kids, sila, I would say, falls on the millennials. 
Actually, yung two, hindi na natin. Jensen na. But the two, I am trying to understand them based on ano sinabi ng magulang ko. Then I realized that Gen Y are the hackers of the generation. We still have the expert here of security. <laughs> so if you're going to profile the cyber, the, the, the hackers, they have hacked us. This generation of millennials have hacked us. Why? When they opened their eyes, they were already immune to all of these computers, internet, and all those stuff. Now, it was not any more institutional based because institutional based are still you learn it from school, no? But you know, this one, they learn it from their environment. And in the context of IoT, and I I I just say my piece in terms of machine. No? I always say this to CEOs and COOs. No? The value of IoT for a typical knowledge-based economy, for them to be profitable, is you need to populate all those small informations coming from an environment that you cannot monitor. These are the physical assets. These are the energies. These are the electricities and everything, right? So now, if you are able to get all this information, the like of a kid, a millennial kid who grew up with a lot of information, you would be surprised. I have a good friend. We have a friend in a group where we're attending at age 26, Pita Tan, MFT, MFT group. She's a tycoon because she was able now to hack that we were taught that at that age of 55 we'll be retiring early so that you know you could enjoy life. They went and hacked the shortest path because they are they're able to populate even the behavior of stocks that they can be an angel investor that at an age of 30 to 35, they could retire. <laughs> so the key there is knowledge base is actually, bottom line is information. If you have information, whether it be physical assets, movement of a vehicle, a telemetry solution, or anything in your environment that you are able to monitor, you could already make a decision in the next five to 10 years where it is heading. So again, the key, especially for our initiatives in IoT, is we enable all these machines to populate information and put it in that environment where you could do the analytics and later on do, uh, you know, do, do the logics related to that. It's a long answer to a short question, but I think the key there is you are able to get information out of a technology that is given to you. And IoT brings that value of populating information. The simplest way I, I do it on a layman's term of explanation of IoT is a light that I want to monitor that this turn on and turn off at a given day. I could already know the duration of time once I put it on the cloud and there's a database so that I can translate that, that I know what energy was consumed by this light at a given day and populate it furthermore in a one month so that I know the contribution of this light to my electric bill. <laughs> that's simple. And that's knowledge based. Malayo pa tayo sa oya sa IOT in the Philippines. But I think knowledge based 15 years ka Mr. Mani, I think uh, there should be a correlation at some point because once we are able to populate all this information, in the next five years, we are prepared as Filipinos to see where we are heading. Honestly, kikita ko na siya on my own vision because I've been an you know, advocate of this IoT and I've been populating a lot of logistics application right now. And just yesterday, I realized malalaki logistics company, they're challenged because they see now the data na pinopulate, populate through our technology so we are providing mga GPS, right? Monitoring. They realized that gusto na lang nila gawin ngayon is distributed yung yung warehouse. So they are looking at uh, fulfillment centers, like a sari-sari store where you could drop a good na in order mo say, sa Lazada later on. Because the challenge is, and, and we, okay, we can all relate, for them, the distributed logistics approach will be the one that will address the physical traffic congestion. Same with those to me in IoT. For me to, 
you know, to address the problem in data collection, meron tayong digital traffic naman. So that's why I mentioned to you earlier, and the device is to be there. Mahaba ang sagot ko talaga pag I'm passionate about it. No? But the uh, knowledge base is simple as that. You are getting a lot of information from there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll always say thank you. I'm Filipino. Uh, I was born here. Uh, I spent 45 years in my life of me in Europe. Madrid, that's why I just do a service. And almost the past 70 years in Amsterdam. So, some, yes, I can stand Tagalog. Very little. Mafia, yes. Mafia. I have all my with Mafia. <laughs> so I was invited a couple of days ago by Leo and I to join this IOD. Uh, and they told me to talk about artificial intelligence for the Center and IT. But it's just perspective what we do is the Montico. Part of we are your digital innovators. We started as home automation, but we are evolving as we go uh, for uh, like using more facial recognition, more big data, analytics, and so on and so on and so on. But today the presentation I have is nothing to do with numbers or data. It's my opinion as a Filipino that I've been seeing the evolution of the call centers or things that we have here. And, and this is since this afternoon, I prefer not to give you data, but only some music. How would you like it? So, so we have, my point is the evolution of the human humankind. So we said that since the beginning, millions of millions of years, and I was talking with a political party, that we had developed, tools that we had investigated, or, or accidentally we learn about the culture. But during our millions of existence in the curve, the point is that all the human beings has been embracing this culture. Okay. So that's that's what I see about the evolution. So in the next slide, this like the 1920s call center.
I'm saying here is that evolution has been there. We, as a human being, we evolved and so on. So, so the next slide, it is this what we do, the multicol. So the, the multicol is, I think uh, I've mentioned, is we are, we use cloud servers, business intelligence, big data, data analytics, SaaS, SaaS, and all of the web apps. We evolve. As we said, we started as home automation, and we're looking in the new technologies that are coming up. And as we evolve, this is what I see for the industry of the call centers and DPO and the IT technology. This is my opinion, and this is my perspective. If we go to the, the next slide, this is what I see where the people of industry at this moment can be held. And I think it was mentioned already by Heidi. We have a business intelligence. Business intelligence <coughs> means we have metrics, dashboards, and process improvements. There was a guy who was talking about cybersecurity, that Ford, Deloitte is here, Accenture is here, NS and John is here, etc. Therefore, how many people are there working? 100, 150,000 people, Filipinos? Those Filipinos are the ones who are going to be improving these kind of services. Digitalization. Uh, a while ago, I was talking with a person with the coconut. He was saying about how can we digitalize the coconut industry. Well, that's the same thing. We need to improve our CFM, the ERPs, the MRPs, and the SAS. Artificial intelligence, as like you said, we call it facial recognition. Text learning, I think it was also mentioned a while ago by one of our the panelists. The chatbot, object recognition. Green City, uh, paperless. Again, in Europe, we are not used anymore to the papers. Even the printers is obsolete already. Yes, I agree that there will be paperless or less paper and so on. But it's way we. I think someone I was talking a while ago during lunch is about the education of the training. Right? The way I was I was learned or was educated is how we embrace these electronic technologies. But for the topic that I was invited for is about uh, the about the call centers, the PPO, and I think I think it's not what they're doing. It's what the experience they're gaining of how we are going to evolve and how we're going to use that. And I think, again, I said, if we're able to evolve in using this thing, yes, maybe the call center will disappear, but most of the people will be gaining this experience and we're going to get this kind of services worldwide. And that's really going to be a big, huge change also in the economy for this country. So again, digitalization, Business intelligence, artificial intelligence, and concept of the green city. So I think for the last, this like my again my opinion in the way I see how uh, we uh, myself as a, as a person that think that we are going to evolve and accept it is like we have to prepare the change management. The change management is something that you have to gain and to prepare the people to work. You have to manage that. You manage that. The process management, the process improvement, the continuous improvement that is required. They have to be in that sense. We always embrace, I personally, and at least the people that we're working with, is embrace and accept new technologies. The millennials, the generation Y, X, Z, they're not afraid of the <coughs> new technologies. They were born with that. They will, we will never change that kind of mentality. You give a kid two years old a mobile, or on my iPad, 100% sure, without password, they're able to go and play the game, right? So improve the skills. Improve the skills means if we're going to have this concern about what will happen in the call centers, the peak of industry in this country, IT, in the next 10 or 5 years, it's because of the new technologies are coming. Well, if I'm a manager, if I'm going to invest, I want to consider how can we improve the skills of the people, educate them to the next level. That's the only way we are able, not to survive, but at least to provide a better service and added value, as I think it was mentioned while ago. What is added value of our industry, of our of our way of doing things toward toward the international environment, that international environment that improves skills, invest in people and talents, and adapt as it comes. Right. So those are the things that I think. 
uh, using the new technology, using what we have uh, coming in the industry, in the way I see, again, the business intelligence, uh, artificial, artificial uh, business intelligence, artificial intelligence, etc. Those are the things that we have to be globing and moving around so that the people in the next five to ten years, the newcomers, will be prepared to, to work and continue in their own career. And the last one thing I always say in a new technology, renew or die. Right? Whatever is doing, whatever is working today, yes, it's, it's working, it's, it's functioning. Nevertheless, who, no one can guarantee that next day that process will continue. There's a big, huge example already in the enterprise business as a Kodak, as an example, uh, Nokia, etc., 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 Tosh, but lately. But the thing is, renew or die. And that's one thing that I think. My, again, my opinion, and I'm quite proud of, of that as being a Filipino, is that we are Filipino, we are unique. We, are, we can invent, and we can survive, and we can adapt. And that's any Filipino that even you, you talk here in, the, in our country, or outside the country, abroad, you talk with them, they can see. They're working, and they can survive in that way. So I think my last day is your die. That's my my concept of what would be the new technology for the new generation. Clear. This is relative to facial recognition. Yep. We're in this era of Vicky Bello, <laughs> where in the vanity of the millennials, the Angkor, it's called case management, process management, then adapt it comes. How can we correlate that technology in the changing, <coughs> in the changing of faces? Based right? On in the cosmetic. In the cosmetic <laughs> side. The new technology. Yeah. Photos. What would be the original in terms of facial recognition? Yeah, that's a, that's a cool one. Um, the thing is that, the thing is that, um, in the testing that we've been doing for the facial recognition, it's like three basic uh, exactly. There's like three basic features in what we can say in the face. It's the eyes. I think some, somewhere in this kind of the circumference of our cheeks and the ears. So, so yes, uh, if we are going to look as for those changes, we have a certain database. Again, it is the database we have. Uh, if we're able to have a picture of that person that you're referring to, which I, I assume that that person is the one making these changes, and they have the client. So those pictures are going to be placed in the database. And the database will have this kind of option to make this calculation automatically. <laughs> In the next, the last thing that we're doing for the facial recognition is not only for facial recognition but also for common object that we were able to get via latency of 0 point, uh, 0 0.2 seconds and using a server from Spain to US and back and we were able to detect the fake number and the face of the death in several years, the past 15 years. So we're testing that already. So yes, what kind of change would appear? But again, the artificial intelligence is not only what we have now, but it's based again what we have in our the big data data analytics. Question. Implicitly, uh, you you mentioned gave a, a scenario of uh, the phasing out of well, implicit though it was not so spelled out. Uh, of, of the call center type of employment, and uh, which is significant because the BPOs now number one over as uh, over of that as Mr. Ike mentioned earlier, uh, but our education you emphasize the stress to lead for education, but the way our education systems and curriculum everything are not are not designed or programmed to address the future because 
we're training our kids to do something what is given the past, but without how they can uh, prepare for the job which will be different in the future, totally different. So uh, there's a dysfunction somewhere or how? Yeah, again, how this, do is, this is the, the way, uh, again, as a word, but I don't want to implicit that implicit the saying that the uh, call center withdrawal will disappear. What I'm saying is that if we're able to adjust and accept the new technologies that's coming, right, the job that we're doing now will evolve in another phase. That's, but what we think is that we have to prepare them. But your question is how can we measure that? How can we balance based on the education system that we have maybe in the Philippines and so on? I think it's part of the the lady here was the one who said it a while ago. It's the education. I w I'm not here to change. The only thing we're saying is that all of us here has to embrace the technology. How? As an example, education. At least uh, my kids, my kids are 25, and 23, and 12. They never had these books at home. It was all online. <coughs> all was in Google. They're not bookies, right? Not bookies. They were learning. They were, they, were, they were reading all of these books online. How they can they do their homework online? All these big data sort of stuff. So again, the systems. There are a lot of systems in the market. Now, are we going to change in the Philippines? Maybe yes, because of the new coming of the new era of this kind of internet, right? and so on and so on. So, and the kids, at least the way I see the generation that. Uh, there, there was, uh, uh, was explained a while ago. Is that's, that, that's that's my vision also. It's like we know you know the knowledge, here, you know the know-how here, right? But if I'm able to bring what I've seen in the past 40 years from Europe together, with what you have, I think there's a good win-win situation. It's a good combination. So, so again, maybe the kids here has their same limitation of because this is what they've been told to do, and they're just going to do. Or this is the system that is being done, and this is the way we're doing it. But that's what we say about the millennium. They are disruptors. They're seeing changes, and they want to change. And they don't want to change that way, and they're going. And no one's going to stop them. And as an example, my girl who's standing here in international school summer in Katipunan, that's a very disruptive uh, school, international school. The way they're training is the, men the mentality of the being entrepreneurial for kids. They're not following any more the stream of standard Ateneo, or Asal, <coughs> This is the way we do it. This is the, it's, it is evolving for it, other thing that's cool, yeah. right? So again, the, the tools are there, and how are we going to adopt it? Is how we would like to embrace it. But the education system is something that will be changing accordingly if the new technologies, new communication that's going to be provided, will provide that. I guess you as a parent, I don't, you don't want to see your kids throwing this. It's like every day I see kids with a luggage throwing like they're traveling. Mm -hmm. My kids, the only they have is a backpack with a bullpen, and that's it. And they started 70 years. You know, man. Are, are they successful? You can see that in Finland, Germany, and all, and all Europe. 